All right, everyone, good afternoon. Thanks for coming to the Wilson Center for uh, game week number two. Uh, obviously, this is a very unique week for us. This is the first home game on campus in nearly 40 years. Um, before we get started, I have a couple of housekeeping items I want to go over. Before the game on Saturday at approximately 2 o'clock in the press box, uh, Commissioner Mike Oresco from the American Athletic Conference will be on hand to address uh, members of the media and then take any questions. should last about 10 to 15 minutes tops. And again, that'll be at 2 o'clock in the press box. Uh, last week, I told you I'd have your credentials and parking information today. Um, we're going to move that to Thursday simply because we have a big event on Thursday planned, really for each of you guys. Uh, Josh is going to be passing out uh, a release here. It's called, uh, basically, it's Press Box 101. And, and we're going to acclimate each of you to where you park, where you enter, where you eat, where you get to the press box, where you get to the post-game locker room, how you get on the field, and, and how you get to the photo work room. Uh, we'll go through that at 3 o'clock this Thursday. We're also going to have a number of speakers on hand. Mr. Yeoman, the namesake for the stadium, will be there. Uh, Rick Dixon, our athletic director. Yvette Jones. And finally, John Lange from Game Day, our Game Day operations manager. We're going to go over uh, some final briefings uh, that we want to get to the just to you guys and to the public. Really, it's one of our last public opportunities to, to get that information out. So we want to do so on Thursday. So information will be for you guys and the public. So. We'll hand out your credentials, your parking information, and your parking maps at that time. If you got, it'll be at 3 o'clock. Uh, meet here. We'll take you to the multipurpose room in the new stadium. That's where the event will take place. Uh, if you have, as anybody has any questions, please see me uh, when we're done here. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce head coach Curtis Johnson. Good afternoon, everybody. A uh, very, very disappointing loss for for us this past week. We went to Tulsa. I thought we played pretty decent offensively. I thought Tanner Lee played very well. Sherman Betty played very, very well. A lot of those young kids starting to grow up. Played a lot of freshmen and sophomores. That's the bulk of our roster. Our defense didn't play as well as we expected them to play. And, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't win the game. But uh, this week we'll be up, we're pretty up, upbeat. I think our guys, what we have to do now is just distinguish between the event and the game. You know, this mean nothing. This game will mean hardly anything to us if we don't win this game. You know, we got to win this game, not just to go out there and play because we opened up a new stadium and we we playing in it. It's a great new stadium. I love everything about it, but we still have a football game to win. Any questions? Please raise your hand if you have questions. Uh, the triple option is obviously something that that comes up all the time when you, when you hear about Georgia Tech. How long ago did you guys kind of start looking at it? Did, did you, in your Tulsa game plan, were you looking at Georgia Tech at all, or did the long week allow you to do that? Well, well we, we did some stuff in last spring, and then we did some stuff in the summer that allowed us to do it, and during training camp, we had some option days and some option periods. So, so they, are, they are well aware of the game plan. You know, we just got to execute what, what, what we're trying to get accomplished, but we've been looking at them, those guys, since probably last season. This is different. This, this office is totally different than what you know most people run. So we just have we had to put in a lot of time on this one. Can you pull from anything over your last two years coaching here? An offense that you faced has been similar to Georgia Tech. I mean, it's hard to mimic it, obviously, in practice. No, it's very, very hard. You know, last year was the, the read option. You know, we we our first year here, we had troubles with that offense. That was one of the new fads going in, and you know, we we finally a year ago we began to play well against that, and then. Hopefully we could get some stuff done, but it's hard to mimic. It's hard to, you know, they're, they're in a team that, that does this, that, that we face. So this will be, this will be a lot different for us. Uh, obviously a, a lot of yards allowed last week, but how, you know, defensive tackles are such so important against this type of, uh, of team. Two positions you had to replace. How do you feel they played last week, and how do you, how much confidence do you have in them going in? Well, I didn't feel they played as as well as we expect them to play. You know, they definitely have to play better. And I thought the run defense was was decent, but I thought thought it was you know no pass rush. You know, we we had we never moved the quarterback last week off the spot. So uh, you know, we we just got to play this week as assignment football. You know, those guys got to get do their assignments, do it to 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 great ability, and and if they do that, we'll have a chance of beating this team. Coach, I know it's uh, Saturday's a first impression day. Uh, how important is it to, to make a good first impression? Maybe some, some people who haven't seen you play in person in a long time. You know, I think it's, uh, it's always good to make a great impression. You know, we, we, gotta, we, we got to get to the phase in this program where we, we win at our home games and 
we turn this thing in our, into our big home field advantage. We've been talking about it all the time, but you, you know, you got to play that way. And you know, we just, we definitely want to play well. I think our kids want to play well. I mean, they want to first time being home. They, I think they have some pride about themselves in this stadium. You know, these guys understand that. You know, it's a come rebound game for us, and you know, I think they're going to play well. You mentioned yesterday that there was some um, communication trouble with the secondary. Um, could you be more specific on that? And then I got another. Well, no. Well, this is just it's just communication. You know, just you they know. Couldn't hear each other. No, or... it's just me and you. Me and you calls the, the, the basic calls. We just got to get who's making the call, who's the who's the commander of the calls, and we just got to do those calls. Who do you want in charge back there? Well, it's Schofield in, in Monroe. Okay, and then um, with the stadium. Give me something specific that you like about the stadium, and then um, if there's, uh, if you had to describe, it, I, I've had a lot of people ask me, well, what is it like? How would you describe it? Well, I, I, I love the intimacy about the stadium, the close. You know, if you if you're accustomed to playing in front of crowds and. You can see the intimacy. The crowds are right on you. You know, you can see the fans, the fans right there on you. And that's what this this whole thing is all about: is to get as many people to see our kids play. And I, I think that's the number one best thing about. It. I think the fields are great. I mean, it's a hundred yard field, but but they're great. You know, where the location? I I think I love the location. Uptown, different from downtown, different from other places. It's, it's a perfect spot. But just being so intimate is just. Everybody on top of each other. Everybody's getting yelling, screaming, and you know, cheering us on to a victory. You mentioned Leonard Davis and Brandon LeBeau. Obviously, didn't have one a great game at Tulsa. Have you guys considered moving Darian Monroe back full time to that safety position, or is it too early to do anything? Well, like I that? think those guys first time playing the, the amount of football that they played, and it was just unfortunate that they played on the road. Just unfortunate they played at that against that team. But you know, I think we're going to continue to try. We got some other guys that we can, some other moves we can make. But you know, you 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 want to make a move, and then Nixon's out right now, so you just can't. You know, you just kind of, kind of figure out the best situation, especially for this week, because this is a little bit different. It's a little bit different beast, I'd call it. Coach, two things. I know you had different uh, folks kicking off on Thursday. It, will you settle on one, or will that still be kind of a thing that you'll do there? And two, um, how big, in your opinion, was that touchdown by them right before the half when you had a 14-point lead? Yeah, you know what I, I would say is, our day is our day is the kicker, but he he, he had a groin issue. So then we put the other kid in, Peter in. But, you know, so we, as, as long if our day is healthy, he'll be our kicker. He'll kick off for us, excuse me. You know, I think it was the momentum changer. You know, Tanner had a, a young mistake. You know, he called, a, he called a run and a pass. He called the run play and then a pass with the run. He got a little confused with what was coming in. And, uh, you know, we, he, he, took, he had the sack fumble. It was more of the line was doing a run and the receivers was doing a pass. You know, he just, he just kind of spaced out on that one. That was one of those young guy mistakes. So that was the momentum changer. You would, you would hope that your defense stop them where they were, you know, punt or don't score, not on a long touchdown right before the half. And I thought that was the momentum changer of the game, you know, the sack fumble and then the long touchdown because we had two guys right there. You know, both of those guys could have made that play. It, was, it wasn't a very hard play to make. You, you've been around here for a couple of years. Do you notice the beehive of activity that, that this building has kind of taken on in the last couple of weeks with the stadium? I know you're you're in the football meetings, but do you see how different the atmosphere is? Yeah, yeah I here? think the atmosphere is very different. You know, and I love it because our coaches work hard, and a, and, a, and a players work extremely hard. And you know, you know, we feel that that that. The people around here are getting excited about us. And I tell those kids that all the time. This this feels like the excitement is about you guys. Now we got to play like it, and we got to do some things like it. We got to, you know, we got to mature a little bit. We got a lot of young kids, like I say, playing. There's no excuse. I mean, everybody has 11, but but you know, I think the community is excited. New Orleans is excited. I mean, you know, I'm getting calls across the country about tickets that guys I would say you never come to a game. So I mean, there is some additional excitement about this program. The students waiting in line, you know, all the way down to the Hertz Center, something that, you know, 
you guys have probably never seen that this program isn't seen in a very long time. What does that say about this school and, and excitement for? You know, I think the school is definitely, you know, in the right direction. I think, you know, the students here love love the school and they love the the, the, the promotions and the stuff that the, the school does. We do they do concerts, they do everything on this campus. It's like a little city of their own. But you know, now they get excited about a fall sport like football. They have lines around the uh, all the way up to Hertz, and I, I couldn't believe it myself. You know, so if you get the students behind you and we can continue to get better and play better, we'll have a really, really good program Graham here in the not so distant future. Um, do you have any special guests that are going to be in attendance? <laughs> yeah, we have a couple of people that'll be in attendance, but we well, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to spoil it for us. Is it a surprise to the team? Does the team There's a surprise guest every week to our team. How much of a benefit is it to the offense having tight ends that you can? that you can throw the ball to and that are a major part of the game. <laughs> you know what? You know, it, it's, 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 it's the way you got to run this offense. You know, it's unfortunate we hadn't had very many of them in, in the past, but it's the way that this offense works. You need big physical guys where you can run, pass. You could get, you could, you could kind of, kind of dictate, you could dictate what the defense does. And I thought, I thought Eric Price did a great job of doing that this, this past game. You know, with the limited stuff we had with Tanner, he did a phenomenal job calling it. And he called it so well that, you know, we, we got some big plays. We got some throws down the field. We got some three-step throws. And we, we just got to continue to make plays and continue to get tough yards like, you know, Sherman and those guys did. And if we continue to do that, we'll have a chance to be a pretty good program. CJ is only one game in, but do you see Tanner has the it factor that he's your guy that you're going to have probably playing quarterback for the next three or four years here at Tulane? I sure hope so. You know, one thing about him now, he's he's cool as the other side of the pillow now. Nothing rattled, rattles him. And and it's funny, he got hit nine times, and a couple times it was he was in the wrong protection. He did some things wrong. It, it's young quarterback stuff, but but I'm telling you, he just got up like it was like it was nothing. A couple times I didn't think he was getting up, and every time he got hit, he delivered the ball where it was catchable. About half of them w were caught, you know. So and just finding your check downs, you know, it's something that we hadn't seen here. You know, the guy goes goes through his progression, finds his check down. You know, a couple of balls that were dropped. They, I mean, it was perfect. I, I probably could have caught those. <laughs> My wife wouldn't let me play, though. But, uh, you know, but I'm telling you, he's, I think he's going to be a phenomenal player for us. Uh, people have covered Sherman Beatty right here. We knew he had talent. Were you blown away by, in his first game, the numbers, to put up over 200 yards rushing, what he did uh, at Tulsa? Sherman is extremely talented. And I, and I, and I re uh, reference Sherman as being our Babe group. He's our home run hitter. You know, the thing about Sherman, you know, talent goes, you know, where it goes. Opportunity comes. Talent comes. What was most impressive about Sherman was two things: his pass protection. If you go back and watch that film, now he clocked a couple guys that that you just, you know, they were a lot bigger. And then his ability to catch the ball, you know, just possess the ball and protect the football. The long runs. I think Sherman will have long runs. You know, he did it at John Curtis. He'll do it here. But those other things give him a chance to be a great player. You had mentioned Tanner's inexperience a little bit. That the sack fumble. He, the touchdown to rush, it looked like he made a call at the line of scrimmage. Was that a little bit above his years and above his It was, it was way above. I don't know how he found him. You know, that's, that's something that I will only saw true priest do. You know, find a guy when they, the, you know, the defense was, they were trying to come with, they were coming with, you know, six-man pressure. And they hit him on that play. And he found a guy who was all the way, he went through his progression so fast, he must have processed it. He saw him making a me, you call because the DBs were on the same level. And, I couldn't believe he found Rush. He found him, and it was it was a great play. It's way behind his years. That, that's that's year two or three in the program. Coach, comment on the fact that you had three guys last year on your team that made pro <laughs> rosters. I mean, with Santos and Grant and and uh, Darkwa. And also, I want to ask you: Is there a is there like a do you have to learn how to win close games? Because that was you know the game last week, close game. You guys could have won either way. Talk about that, and also about the. Uh, how proud you are of those three guys who made NFL rosters? Extremely proud. Extremely. I don't know if this is true. An AP writer called me last night. He said, Dark War, not, excuse me, not Dark War, uh, Cairo's the first Brazilian player to play in the NFL. I didn't, I didn't, regular season. Yeah, I've, I've never, I, I, I didn't know that. That's a, that's a big time right there now. Just, 
just knowing Cairo, his demeanor, how he is. I told the guy he's a people person. You love him. Darkwell, the thing about Darkwell around here, he was never really fully healthy. First year, I, you know, I screwed up. I should have redshirted him when I wanted to, and I, you know, tried to win the first year. And then last year, he went through his bumps and bruises. And, you know, he was, he was a really, really good runner. And Grant, you know, Keith Williams done a fabulous job with Grant. I'm telling you, he's going to play a lot of years. It just makes us proud as a program that, you know, in a few short years, we, we got guys that are making not just one guy, you know, and then to be mentally tough to be a free agent and go in there and make, and make a team. And, you know, uh, Cairo unseated a guy who was all pro kicker. You know, so, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just phenomenal to just have guys to do that. And uh, what was your second question? Just the fact that it was a close game yeah. last week, and, the, and is there a, like a, a, a learning curve or how to win close games like that? Absolutely. I think you, you have to. You, you have to learn how to, you know, when you, first of all, I think what you got to do is you got to learn how to put the hammer down when you got a team reeling a little bit. You can't have fumbles. You can't have a turnover in those things. And then you can't give up big plays. You know, you got to ex communicate extremely, extremely intently so that you won't make those mistakes. And then just understanding, don't let the moment get too big for you where, you know, we are in overtime and we are on the road. And now all of a sudden, you got to play just like you're playing in the backyard. Just follow your assignments. Do what you're supposed to do. And I think that'll come. I think that'll come quicker than later. I don't want to make too big of a thing over over Sherman's play, but when you you've always talked about how this offensive line is one year older, should be one year better. Did we see? Did you see that in the Tulsa game? How they've kind of grown up a little bit? Absolutely. You know, we still have a ways to go. We're still playing with younger kids, but let me tell you, they really blocked them. I felt. You know, I felt it wasn't that Sherman. Sherman made some great runs, but. I thought he got to, into the second level of the defense, and I thought LeCedric did. I thought, I thought those guys, when you're starting to get in the second level to, of the defense, you, you, you begin to, to run, you begin to run, get long runs. And, and, you know, and even the pass protection was so much better. Sometimes, you know, I thought Tanner was a little felt unsettled, but it was picked up. You know, you go back and watch the tape. This was picked up. This, you know, he didn't run out of there, but he, he looked like he was unsettled a couple of times. So I think this line is maturing. We still got a ways to go. There's still three, three young kids, real young kids playing, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with the direction we're going in with the offensive line. I know Sherman's only one game in, but when you assess his skill set, what does he need to get better at? What, what do you talk to him about in the meeting room um, off week and everything about how he needs to continue to progress? Well, just the focus of, of, of being a complete back. You know, just to focus a couple of times, you know, the ball kind of, you know, I don't want him to, you know, get reckless with the ball. He got to really, really protect the ball. Sometime in protection, he just needs to step up two more yards where, you know, Tanner doesn't feel a pressure. And then sometime you got to know when the journey's over. Because a couple of those runs, I thought he was, it was a fumble waiting to happen. You know, sometime the journey's over, get down, we, we'll have another good play again. So that's some stuff that he definitely ha will have to work on. Anybody else? Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you very much.